Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Oh. Come here, I'll hold you. <laughs> you in my car, maybe there's something dead on it. <laughs> It's Jimmy Kimmel Live! Tonight, Paul Dana, Nick Offerman, and Seth Rogen, plus music from 2J and Lil Wayne, with Quito and Maguito. And now, Jimmy Kimmel! And I know what. It happens to be my birthday today. Thank you. <laughs> 73 years old today. Oh, wow. That's right. 73 years old. Everybody says, I hope you have the best birthday ever today. I will tell you with certainty, it has not been the best birthday ever. It like, started off rough. I got on the scale this morning. I have one of those digital scales that connects to your phone, and that way you can keep a record of your weight for future generations, I guess, and for my grandchildren. <laughs> and this scale, it's like an $80 scale. Every time you get on it, it tells you how much weight you either gained or lost since the last time you got on it. So I get on it this morning, and the first display is a little graphic. It says, happy birthday. I'm like, which is a weird thing <laughs> coming from an appliance you're standing on naked. <laughs> and then after happy birthday, the next screen, it tells me that since the last time I weighed myself, which was Thursday, by the way, I've gained 4.9 pounds. <laughs> Happy birthday, you gained five pounds in four days. <laughs> I almost took it out to the garbage. I almost threw it in a recycling bin. But... I also got a lot of texts today. When your birthday's in the news, you get a lot of texts from like a guy that got you tickets once to Cirque du Soleil, <laughs> a driver that picked you up at the airport in Detroit. You're like, what the hell? Oh, 2008 was the last, that kind of thing. The people you really want to hear from on your birthday. But... <laughs> I also got a nice email from a celebrity this morning. You want to guess who that celebrity was, Guillermo? Uh, not you, although I did get a nice text from hey. you. Uh, ben Affleck? Not Ben Affleck, no. George Clooney? Not George Clooney, no. Matt Damon? No, come on. Uh, said, Will Ferrell. I said a celebrity. What? Uh, Will Ferrell. Not Will Ferrell, no. The answer is Weird Al Yankovic gave me a... <laughs> right. Right. So... I think I made out in the plus column. Speaking of making out, do you see this video of Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift? Well, ta <laughs> Woo, indeed. Travis Kelsey flew all the way to Argentina to see Taylor Swift in concert. And you know, she makes him buy the tickets. He has to get them on Ticketmaster like everybody else. And after the show, she comes off stage, and uh, he's there. She runs, jumped into his arms, and then he ran her back 57 yards for a touchdown. It was incredible. <laughs> These two, I mean, these, she is on tour around the world and still makes it to his games on Sundays. He's in the middle of a football season. He's flying to Buenos Aires. They're making it very hard for every other couple that's in a long-distance relationship right now. <laughs> oh, you can't make it to my mom's house for Thanksgiving this year? Travis flew to Singapore <laughs> for Taylor. On the other side of humanity's coin, we have Donald Trump Jr., who was in court again this morning. Uh, there he is. You hear the protesters chanting, crime family, crime family. And that is basically what these people are, a crime family, a very dumb crime family. The Gambozos, if you will. And <laughs> Don Jr., he's so embarrassing. He's on the stand. He's testifying in this $250 million fraud trial, and he has to compliment. He said his father is an artist with real estate. Yeah, he's an artist. With, he's Vincent Van going to jail with real estate. Is what he is. He's, he also boasted that his dad is the father of hotel gyms. He said, maybe someone put a gym in a building somewhere, but no one did it at the scale of my father. He's saying that his 
father. The father of the hotel gym is a guy who's never stepped inside one, okay? <laughs> the amount of ass kissing in this trial is insane. DJ TJ, of course, denies any and all wrongdoing and is instead going with the our accountants did it defense. I'm not supposed to rely on a big five accounting firm, like one of the biggest accounting firms in the world. I can pay them millions of dollars. I rely on them to do accounting, but I'm supposed to know more than them. By this logic, insurance companies are gonna start suing patients for listening to their doctors, right? Do you understand, like, I, am I supposed to know more? Oh, Don Jr. doesn't know anything about it. I'm not an accountant, I'm a business guy. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm a, I'm a business guy who, who had his elbows soldered together, and now <laughs> I move my arms like a Muppet all the time. And with all the complaining the Trumps do about this trial playing out in the media, you could barely even turn the channel without seeing their lawyer doing an interview with somebody. What have they been asking the kids? And tell me how they fit into all of this. They don't fit into all of this. What have they been asking the kids? It's very simple. They'll, they'll ask the kids, did you give a value to somebody? Did you do something? And everybody said, resoundingly, no. And these kids did nothing wrong. They should not be in this case. Ivanka's already out of the case. The boys should not be in the case. That's right. They're just boys. They're, <laughs> they're kids. Eric has a book report due this weekend. <laughs> They're both still wearing pull-ups. They're on trial? I mean, come on. <laughs> Don and Don Jr. had some father and son uh, event this weekend. They went to the UFC fight at Madison Square Garden. There they are. Trump's being cheered on. With, uh, he's got Dana White there. He's got Tucker Carlson in the back. He's got Kid Rock in tow. And of course, oh yeah, there we go, a little fist bump. Don Jr. was thrilled to be a part of the group. He posted this picture of him and Tuck cackling in their blue checker print shirts. <laughs> a couple of banana Republicans right there. And, <laughs> and by the way, Donald Trump's older sister, Marianne, the former judge, died this morning. They found her unresponsive in her apartment. She was 86 years old. So far today, Trump has posted uh, lashing out at the witch hunt, attacking deranged Jack Smith, going on about radical left zealots and thugs, plugging a book of letters he's selling. No mention of his sister whatsoever. I hope he at least has the decency to find a good plot for her on the golf course. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, another Republican candidate has whittled her, himself out of the race. Tim Scott has decided to suspend his campaign for president. If you don't know who S Tim Scott is, it's why he decided to <laughs> suspend his <laughs> campaign for president. This is Tim uh, asking voters to paint him like one of their French girls. This is. <laughs> He's gone now, and it's a shame. I was looking forward to seeing what weird way he was going to sit next. So <laughs> with Scott out, the remaining candidates for Republican uh, are Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, Chris Christie, Nikki Haley, Freddy Krueger, uh, <laughs> Snidely Whiplash, and a big mouth Billy Bass, I think. And on the independent side, you got RFK Jr., who is not only is he anti-vax, he's also apparently anti-socks, because he was photographed strolling around barefoot on a food-covered airplane floor. It takes a special kind of psychopath to wear a belt but no shoes. And <laughs> but this is how you build natural immunity. Big Pharma won't tell you <laughs> to walk around barefoot on an airplane because there's no money in it for them. But, and then we have another unbalanced candidate. Remember the QAnon shaman? This guy? Well, he's out of prison and now wants to serve time in Congress. He's running as a libertarian in Arizona. <laughs> It's like they say, if you can't violently overthrow him, join him. I kind of, <laughs> I have to say, I kind of want him to win just so we could see him in the lunchroom with George Santos. <laughs> There's another new Trump book uh, coming out tomorrow. This one is from Jonathan Carl of ABC News. It's called Tired of Winning, and there's pretty good nuggets. George Carl says, in 2020, Trump hung up on Kim Kardashian, who was calling to try to get someone out of prison because he suspected she'd voted for Joe Biden. And he also reports that Trump was obsessed with the totally bananas idea that he could somehow be reinstated as president. It's an idea he got from our my pillow pal, Mike Lindell, who promised Trump he would be reinstated August 13th, 2021, eight months into Biden's term. I guess that didn't happen, but <laughs> hasn't stopped Mike Lindell. The pillow man is still at it, zooming into his TV live stream from all over the place. He seems to be traveling constantly. Why, we do not know, but we did spend some time putting his whereabouts together. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lindell Report. We're 
going through slippers here. They've turned a blind eye to this election crime. Just a computer error can cost an election. That's why they're attacking my pillow. We get rid of the machine, we melt them down, we turn them into prison bars. Brandon, how am I coming in on? Loud and clear. When I found got evidence in January of 21, it shows China was in the, in the inside. Really? The my pillow 2.0. It went viral on Twitter. There's Mike. Hey, Mike. <laughs> the election of 2020 is going bye-bye. I got must be in a no parking zone here or something. It's a beautiful day here for America. Our customers have always stepped up. Donald Trump won. We're going to get him across, Dom. We're going to be attacked. I had the highest credential. Did it appear like he was attacking me? That's the law. That's nothing to make a joke about. I just got stung by a bee. I'm going, what is that pin going into me? We're going to send a formal invitation to Jimmy Kimmel. Tune in to uh, Jimmy Kimmel on Wednesday night. We've got to get rid of the computers in our, in our elections. Is that a new thing you're doing? where you kind of blur the background. Jump on the bandwagon, the that's, that's because your machines are going to be bye-bye. Frank Social being the reporting... Well, I think we lost Mike. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we lost we lost Mike a long time ago. It's just, just coming around to him now. It's a busy time for Mike Lindell, no doubt, but even busier for our embattled former president, who I guess in an attempt to mend the wall between himself and the Latino community, sat down on his balls for an interview with Univision where he was taken to task on a number of subjects by one of the toughest journalists in any language. You see where this is going? Yeah. Oh, well, let's find out. Buenas noches, and welcome to the Univision interview of Donald Trump. Mr. Trump, first question. Stormy Daniels say you have a chalupa that is very small. Es verdad? I sure. do. <laughs> Me too. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Next question. What would happen if you stopped eating at McDonald's? They would be out of business. They'd be out. <laughs> because you eat so much. I do. <laughs> Me too. What about Melania? How would you describe your marriage? It's a hoax. Yeah, that seems right. I have to say, you look very orange today, sir. Some people say you look like an Oompa Loompa. What do you think of the Oompa Loompas? They're energetic people. They have more energy. They have, they're very smart. They're incredible people. They're passionate people. You know, it's always tough to generalize about people, but you can, you know. Some people say, oh, that's not good. It's not politically correct. You're probably right. It is time to stop being so PC about Oompa Loompas. Great point, sir. Oh, I have another question for you. Can you tell me who's this? That's Silence of the Lamb. That's Hannibal Lecter. Do you know him? He's a friend of mine. He's a, a <laughs> tremendous man. He's been very loyal to me. I've been very loyal to him. Next question. Who are these guys? These are people that are very, very disturbed, very, very mentally ill. Yes, they seem very bad and very ugly, too. Anyway, thank you for inviting me to your very weird house. Before I go, I have a surprise. It is my honor to announce you have been named Mexico's 2023 Pendejo of the Year. <laughs> you look great, sir. Like a real pendejo. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. That was my exclusive interview with El Pendejo Numero Uno, Donald Trump. Back to you in the studio, Tony. Great, very good, great work, Diana. So I don't know who Tony is, but you're outstanding. Put on down.